we present a system capable of real-time inference of realistic neural head avatars. This work was carried out in Samsung KI Center in Moscow. A general pipeline for synthesis of head avatars consists of two parts. The initialization module is run once per avatar and outputs person-specific parameters of the inference module, which then predicts an image for each given pose and runs once per frame. Previous works on neural avatars have achieved a remarkable quality of the outputs at the expense of increasing the computational cost of the inference module while keeping the initialization cost low. This trade-off is unfavorable in a real application, since an increased inference cost introduces extra latency into the system. In our work, we instead propose to increase quality at the expense of the initialization cost. This allows us to achieve better output quality and inference speed than the state-of-the-art for a fixed computational budget and even opens the possibility to run such models on mobile devices. Our model utilizes an encoder-decoder architecture, where the standard encoder accepts source image and pose and outputs embedding tensors, which are used to predict person-specific parameters of the decoder. One of our main contributions is the architecture of the decoder. We propose to split it into two parts. The first part, called the texture generator, produces a high-frequency texture, which acts as an additional person-specific parameter of the system. This texture generator is a large network, which is run once per avatar. The second part, called the inference generator, accepts pose and predicts a warping field for the texture alongside with the low-frequency component of the output. Both the warping field and the low-frequency component have a much smaller complexity than the output image, which allows us to significantly reduce the size of the inference generator compared to the previous models, which predicted an output image directly. Finally, by applying the warping field to the texture, we obtain a high-frequency component and an output image. We therefore propose to split a single large decoder network into two, a heavy texture generator run during initialization and a lightweight inference generator. The whole system is trained in an end-to-end -end fashion, with no external supervision on facial geometry. For more training details, please refer to our paper. These two networks are effectively used to predict different layers of the output image, as can be seen from the example here. We also achieve some degree of disentanglement in terms of head pose of the texture and the source image, which helps our model to extrapolate onto unseen view angles. In order to further improve the quality of the outputs, we propose the following texture enhancement pipeline. We start with the output of the texture generator, and predict a reconstruction of a source image using our inference pipeline. Then we compare it with the ground truth via a lightweight enhancer loss. In our work, we use a sum of squared errors. The gradients of that loss function with respect to the texture are then fed into an enhancement network alongside with the current state of the texture to produce an updated version. Effectively, these gradients provide guides for the network but do not restrict it from modifying areas of the texture which may not be visible on the source image. We repeat that process m times to produce a final version. During training, we additionally reconstruct a different target image using the enhanced texture and evaluate a loss function used to train the base model. The enhancer network is trained by backpropagating the gradients of this loss through its m copies. We perform a two-stage training with base B-layer model being trained first and then train an enhancer network. Using the texture enhancer, we observe an improvement across all quality metrics and it does not affect the inference cost of our pipeline. Here we present the results before and after enhancement. While the changes made by the enhancer may appear subtle, they introduce important high-frequency details like wrinkles, fix errors in the facial geometry, and improve clothing textures, which all increases realism and identity preservation. We extensively compare with two state-of-the-art methods, few-shot V2V and first-order motion model. In order to better compare with the state-of-the-art, we evaluate families of models with varying complexity of the inference part. 
We measure the complexity of each model via the number of multiply addition operations plotted on the x-axis. On the y-axis we show the quality metrics, learned perceptual image similarity, lower the better, cosine similarity between the embedding vectors of a face recognition network, higher the better, and normalized pose error. We outperform other methods across all metrics except for image similarity metric, where the first order motion model performs better. Additionally, we carried out a user study with 60% of respondents preferring our method to first order motion model. This comparison is done on an original VoxCelep2 dataset. We also present a qualitative comparison on a box select 2 dataset with middle-sized models from the previous comparison. Here we have additionally included the results of the few-shot neural talking heads model. We picked source and target images to have diverse poses and expressions in order to highlight the differences between the compared methods. Finally, we present qualitative results with a model trained on a filtered VoxCelep2 dataset with low resolution videos removed. The model presented here is capable of running 250 frames per second on a desktop GPU and 24 frames per second on a mobile device. Our model significantly outperforms previous state of the art in terms of quality for a fixed computational budget yet utilizes a simple design of the inference network which allows us to be portable across multiple mobile frameworks. Yet, as other warping-based methods, our model poorly handles objects with complicated geometry like glasses and headwear. Also, the identity gap still remains noticeable. These and other problems related to quality improvements remain our future work. Thank you for your attention.